Hi everyone, Ainsley here from Small Fry Creations where we tackle everything DIY and this week we're building a shed on a platform. Let's roll the intro and get to work. You've seen it today, we're building a shed so that I can move all of my garden tools out of the workshop and into the shed outside. The first step is to put the shed together so that I can get the dimensions to then build the deck that it's going to sit on. The shed is from a company called Easy Shed. We got it on a great sales, like 30 or 40% off, and it cost us around about $1,000. That includes a couple of skylights and also the accessories on the inside. It's called a narrow slider. It's three meters long by about 800 deep and about two meters high. I will link it in the description below. Our first step is to get this thing together. So let's get this box unpacked and put it together. All right, we've got all of pieces unpacked and we were checking them off the checklist, which is step one in the instructions. And we quickly realized that the instruction book that we have is not for the shed we ordered. It's for a different size. All the pieces are here with the exception of a door track thing that we will use at the end. We also have realized that they haven't sent us our skylights or any of our accessories. So the engineer has been on chat with Easy Shed this morning to sort it all out. The accessories are going to be sent to us as well as the track and we have decided to just delete the skylights from it so that it means that we can get this together today. So I've got the back panels all laid out. Now I've got to continue to read the instructions to work out how I screw them together. Looks pretty easy, but let's get to work. If you haven't picked up on it yet, this project was quite the roller coaster. The engineer was with me each step of the way as this is definitely a two person build. We started with the back panel as you will never see this panel. So we felt it was a good place to start and learn the process. And if we made any mistakes, you would never see them. The instructions give you pictures to show where the screws go, but nothing is pre-drilled or marked. So you only have some black and white images to go off. The screws supplied are self-tapping screws and require quite a bit of pressure to get them to bite into the metal. As per the instructions, placing a block of wood under the metal close to where you're about to drill does help. Just don't put it right under where you're going to screw, otherwise you will secure the wood to the metal. Once the panels are together, you put a metal channel around the border. This channel has a high and low side. The low side faces the front. These pieces are marked with part numbers as per the checklist. One thing I don't love about this shed is they've printed the part numbers on the outside. Why they didn't print them on the inside where no one will see them, I don't know. Okay, hang tight, I'm gonna rant for a second. In the instructions, it says ensure the U-channel finishes flush with each end of the panel. But when I did this, the connector between the two U-channels was then visible and it looked ugly. In the end, we sent it to the metal sheeting and secured it down. But the problem with this, and this is where the frustration creeps in, is I'm now making decisions not 100% knowing how one panel is going to interact with the next. So now I'm building with little confidence and a whole lot of hope that it's gonna work out. Spoiler alert, it does work out. Okay, rant over. Actually, before the rant is over, a PSA for every company out there that creates instructions. Do yourself a favor, go to Ikea, buy a flat pack and take notes from their instructions. Okay, now the rant is really over. Before our roller coaster took a sharp turn, we made our way through the sections, from the back panel to the side panels, to the roof, and finally to the front panel. We also prepped the top metal channel for each of the doors. This called for a couple of holes to be drilled for these wheel car thingies to go in to make the doors slide. It was at this point that the frustration of the day went up a notch. Yay, yay. I've got to say I'm pretty frustrated at this point. Like I said before, the instructions that were sent to us were wrong. We've since had new instructions emailed 
to us and we have now worked out that we're not just missing one part of the shed but two parts of the shed so we're kind of at a stopping point until those parts arrive hopefully they will come soon along with the accessories that weren't sent to us either the other thing I want to note is about the measurements. On the website, the measurements are there, should be noted that they are internal measurements. We have purchased a narrow sliding shed. It is going into a narrow section of the yard. We don't have a lot of leeway when it comes to the measurements. And the external measurements are probably at least 100 mil, at least deeper than what it says on the website. So. We may put this shed together and it could be a total failure because we are working with really narrow spaces, but we're gonna to continue to press on on a new day when those pieces arrive, which is where we will pick this video up. But at the moment, I'm quite frustrated. Hopefully, we can turn it around and turn it into a success, but uh, the next time you see me, we'll be on a new day, hopefully, with parts to finish off the shed. All right, it has been seven days, and from this point out, I am hoping to turn my frustrated frown upside down and finish this build on a positive note. A box has arrived midweek. I am hoping in this box are the parts I need to finish the shed. The shed for the last seven days has been strapped to the shelving behind here just so it doesn't catch flight when the garage door opens. But our first step this morning is to open this box and see if I've got the parts that I need and then keep moving with the build. Okay. Yes, I think. And then the other rail. Yes. Okay, I think these are the parts that I was looking for and needed. So, let's keep moving. Okay, and we're back. I attached the wheel car thingy to the channel we drilled the holes in, and then I could put the door panels together. With this step done, it was finally time to turn these flat panels into a box. This is definitely a two-person job, and we found it easier when the engineer held a block of wood on the inside near where I was drilling, and the two of us would push towards each other, creating pressure and making it easier for the screw to bite into the metal. We made our way around the shed, trying to hold the shed as square as possible throughout. We had a square sitting on the ground, and we would continually check for square with each panel. Oh, that was a nice part in. You got your timber in? Timber's in. Can you tell me when? I'm good? I'm pushing as long as you're pushing up. Yep, you good? Yep, go. Also, from this angle, there's nowhere to hide my shame. Don't judge my shame. What's your shame? On top of the bicycle storage is our shame. Pushing? Yeah. Did that connect? Yeah. Oh. We were making good progress. We attached the door track to the top and bottom of the front panel and it was helpful to have the engineer hold the timber pieces either side of where I was going to drill to create pressure as the metal flexes very easily and it's hard without the pressure to get the screw to bite. It was time to put the doors on and test if this thing worked. We have doors and almost a shed. Things are looking up. Now the next step in the instructions is to attach the roof, but we're actually gonna hold off doing that until we have built the deck which the shed is going to sit on because then we can attach it squarely. Is squarely a word? We're running with it, you know what I mean. Now in the instructions, they recommend that you actually attach the shed to a concrete slab. We can't do that with where it's going and I'll explain in more detail when we get outside and start to install the shed. But our next step is to build the deck, so let's get to the comfortable stage when I can work with timber and start building a frame. As we were working with narrow spaces, the platform was only just big enough to fit the shed on it. We took measurements at this point and built the platform as per those measurements. Because like I mentioned before, the measurements on the website are not what it is in real life. It's about 100 mil deeper once you take into account the doors and the door tracks. The platform is made up of two subframes, a bit like framing for a house. I used large 70 mil outdoor treated pine screws to put it all together. 
The miter saw on stop block made quick work of cutting the pieces. Not only does the miter saw make it quick, but having a stop block ensures that all the pieces come out the same size. I made a quick drilling guide from some scrap wood to save measuring each time. Each screw hole was pre-drilled to avoid the timber from splitting and I held everything together with clamps, checking for square along the way. With both frames built, I could then secure them together. I've got the deck frame up on the saw horses and we are using treated pine so you don't really need to do anything to it but I want to take it a step further to make sure that it's well protected against the weather and it lasts a long time. A tip that I recently picked up from Uncle Knackers over at DIY for Knuckleheads, I will link him below, is to apply a coat of this water-based bitumen paint. This will just give it an extra layer of protection against the weather on the underside of the deck frame. The outside of the frame and the deck slats we painted in basalt, which is the same color as the fence. So let's get painting. The bitumen paint is thick, but very easy to apply. It dries in about 24 hours, but still has a little tack to it. It fully cures in seven days. To finish the day off, I painted the deck slats so they could dry overnight. They are treated pine and they were the cheapest option. You're never going to see them and this is a great option in particular if you're going to paint them like I did. It's now the next day so the coat of paint that we applied yesterday is all dry and the deck is ready to be put together and the shed is ready to go outside and I can have my workshop back because at the moment it's a hot mess and I don't like it, it's stressing me out. So let's jump outside, I'm going to talk you through why we're using a wooden deck as opposed to a concrete slab. Alright, we're down the narrow side of the house and where I'm standing is where the shed is going to go. We've laid out a tape measure so that we can play around with placement in the space because like I said earlier in this video, one of the disappointing things is the measurements on the website are wrong and we were already pushed for space, now we're really pushed for space because of the aircon and the distance to the fence. I'm concerned I'm not going to be able to get the lawnmower out of the shed. We'll wait and see whether or not I can do that. Now we've already got a concrete slab, which is why we can't use one, but this one is sloping away from the house for water runoff. We obviously want it to stay like that. So we've built a deck so that we can bring it up onto a level surface. There will be an air gap under the deck to allow for that water to continually run off. So let's go ahead and get the frame, get it out here and get it level, and then we can get the deck slats on and put the shed on top. All right, we've got the frame out here and we've been playing around with the different levels and I want to run you through how we're leveling the deck. I've picked up these feet from Bunnings which are deck leveling feet and they're adjustable. They come in different sizes so depending on what you need would depend on the size. I've got a couple of different sizes that I'm going to use in different places throughout the frame. At the front side of the frame which is the higher side, I'm also going to use some window packers just so that I can get that air gap under the deck for the water to run off. So we're going to keep playing around and getting this level and then we're almost at the point where we can put the slats on top. The deck leveling feet worked really well and are fairly easy to install. We started by leveling each end and then made our way into the middle. We made sure to check for level along the way. The leveling feet simply attach to the timber with a screw from the side. I laid the timber slats in a brick style pattern which will also add some strength to the subframe. I picked up some deck spaces from Bunnings which were super helpful to keep the spacing even between the boards and keeping them straight. I created another drilling guide with some deck scraps so I didn't have to measure each time. It was hot and tough to be bent over the whole time but after 40 minutes the platform was almost ready. Yes. Leave me here. I've done it. We purposely left the slats long to cut them flush at the end. This gave me a margin for error in the event that something was out by a mill or two. I made most of the cut with the circular saw and finished it off with a handsaw. 
Ooh, we're on the home stretch and we're almost there. The deck is built. We're at the point where we can move the shed outside. However, I have just realized that if I move the shed outside without putting the roof on, which was my original plan, I'm not gonna have any access to the back side because it's up against a fence to screw it in. So we're actually gonna have to put the roof on in here so I can access it and then we're gonna move it outside. Not 100% sure how we're gonna get it outside first, but let's get the roof on and then we'll tackle that. The roof went on fairly easy and we just tried to get it as square as possible. Getting the shed outside was a mission. In the end, we went with brute strength and we took our time to do it in chunks and muscle it outside. It's not heavy as much as it's awkward, large and flimsy. But with a little bit of muscle and a lot of laughter, we got it out onto the platform. The shed is up on the deck. When they say females can't do anything, don't believe them because the engineer and I just muscled this up onto the deck. I am so proud of us. Now the next step is we need to attach the shed to the deck. To do that, we're going to use these angled brackets on the inside. Then we're really ready to actually start using the shed and putting stuff away. I can get rid of the old storage that you see behind me on this side, which is gonna give us a little bit more room and we can start to put stuff in the shed. So let's get this thing attached and wrap this video up. The angle brackets worked a treat and were easy to install. Now for the moment of truth. Can I get the lawnmower in and out of the shed? Yes, I can. I picked up a carpet square from Bunnings and placed it under the mower to help protect the door track as I get the mower in and out. I will also be sure to link the shelving I got from Bunnings as this was the bargain of the build. Each of those shelving units were $16. Yes, $16. They work great and they're galvanized so they're not gonna rust. the shed is all complete and overall now that the shed is on the platform I am really happy with it and it has solved a bunch of problems and given me more space in the workshop. I can get the lawn mower in, I've got this piece of carpet that's going to protect the shed so I hope you have liked this video. If you have, help me out by hitting those subscribe and like buttons and I'll see you on the next one.